A very warm welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Suvrat Arya. I'm a consultant rheumatologist practicing in Delhi, NCR. And today, we are going to discuss about DEXA scan, Dr. which is Dr. the process bone mineral density, which is a very important process and its management. And I'm going to tell you how to interpret it and how to diagnose osteoporosis and how the treatment approach should be. So before we move on to the BMD or the DEXA scan, let me tell you what is osteoporosis. I think most of us know it is a disease which is characterized by low bone mass, microarchitectural disruption and skeletal fragility, which result in increased risk of fractures. So osteoporosis basically is made of two words. Osteo means bone and porosis means having pores. So if you would do a cross section of a bone which is osteoporotic, this is how it will look like as if it has multiple pores inside it. If we talk about the normal bone metabolism, there is a very fine balance between osteoblast and osteoclast. Osteoblast are those cells which are important for the bone formation and osteoclasts are those cells which are important for the bone resorption. So there is an equal balance and there is no change in the bone mass. But if there is in increased activity of the osteoclast which result in increased bone resorption or there is decreased activity of the osteoblast which is basically meaning decreased bone formation this results in decreased bone mass and leads on to the osteoporosis. So what are the features of osteoporosis? Osteoporosis usually has no clinical manifestations because it's just the weak bone. It doesn't cause any kind of a pain or deformity. So until there is a fracture, you may not be able to pick up a osteoporosis unless until you are actively looking for it. A vertebral fracture is the most common initial manifestation of the osteoporosis and other osteoporotic fractures as we all know can be neck or femur fracture and other fractures of the distal radius like Coley's fracture. So how will you diagnose a case of osteoporosis? A clinical diagnosis of osteoporosis can be made if there is fragility fracture particularly at spine, hip, wrist or other bones which are here or if you do a bone mineral density by using what is called as DEXA scan and you find a T-score which is given by the uh, DEXA testing which basically means the standard deviation at any site based upon the bone mineral density measured by the dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. So basically in T-score we are looking at the standard deviation of the patient from a healthy young male or female in the age of 30. So this standard deviation is basically given as the T-score. So if T-score is less than minus 2.5, that means more negative than minus 2.5, then we have to call it as osteoporosis. Or if the T-score is not less than minus 2.5, but you do what is called as FRAC scoring, and you find that the 10-year probability of a major osteoporotic fracture is 20% or 10-year probability of a hip fracture is 3% or more, then also you can label a patient as having osteoporosis. So let us briefly see what is this machine and how does it measure. I'm not going to go into too much of technical details how the uh, bone mineral density is measured and T-score is calculated, but I will tell you. So this is the machine in which a patient usually lie down on this position. The hips are flexed slightly so that the plane of the femoral neck is parallel to the uh, parallel to the table and perpendicular to the X-ray source, which is here. The detection of these X-ray is done by this area, and there are basically two X-ray tubes which are fired at the patient, and that is why it is called as dual energy. And by the algorithm of the machine, it is able to determine the passage of these two X-rays from soft tissue and the bone. And then it calculates what is the bone mineral density. So these kind of machines have database of 
the general population of that area and when they calculate the bmd by of the patient they can use that database to know the normal bone mineral density of a young healthy male or female and give you a value of t score which is standard deviation from that healthy person's value so in which patient you can do a dexa scan now this is very important every physician every orthopedic surgeon rheumatologist should know when to order a dexa scan and this is a very important slide for that all the women which are above the age of 65 and all the men above the age of 70 regardless of any risk factor should undergo dexa scan post menopausal women and men aged in the age of 50 to 70 should be uh, evaluated by dexa scan when certain risk factors are present which i'm going to tell you later on any adult with a fragility fracture fragility fracture means a fracture which is low trauma low intensity fracture or in other terms it can be a fracture when you jump or fall from a height which is less than your own height so that kind of a fracture is called as fragility fracture adults with condition or taking medication associated with low bone mass or bone loss like use of corticosteroids so if the patient is taking this he also or she also should be evaluated for osteoporosis if a person is already diagnosed case of osteoporosis and is on therapy we can do dexa scan to monitor the response to therapy that is also an indication and anybody being treated just to monitor response as i just mentioned so the neck of femur is the most important site where we check for the bone mineral density and lumbar spine has its own advantage because in the lumbar spine the change in bmd to the treatment is quickest to come so follow up but or in response to treatment we can do by checking the bmd at the lumbar spine but you must have seen that there are three areas where we do the bmd so the third area is the distal radius why do we do that so the distal radius is recommended in those patients if hip and spine cannot be measured or interpreted if patient has hyperparathyroidism or the patient has severe obesity that the patient cannot lie down inside the dexa measuring machine so these are basically the three important indications when you may use distal radius rather than the neck of femur and the spine so what are the risk factors which i just uh, spoke about then if these are present we should also consider doing dexa in a post menopausal lady or in a gentleman who is from 50 to 70 years of age advanced stage we have already discussed that as the age increases the bmd decreases so advanced age is a risk factor independent risk factor for osteoporosis if there is history of previous fracture we should evaluate long term glucocorticoid therapy low bmi parental history of hip fracture cigarette smoking excessive alcohol intake and race or ethnicity the risk is higher in the white adult as compared to the black and hispanic or asians so this is how the the classification is osteoporosis is done as per the value of the t score so this is given by who it is according to standard deviation difference between a patient's bmd and that of a young adult reference population this is important reference population should be the population of that area only you cannot compare an asian bmd of that of uh, american or a european descent so if you get a value from minus 1 anything above that that is labeled as normal if you have value from minus 1 to minus 2.5 it is called as osteopenia or low bone density and if you have anything which is less than minus 2.5 or more negative than minus 2.5 then you can be called as having osteoporosis so this is a, a example of how you get the value of a bmd done at neck of femur so the most important two things which you have to see here is the bmd and the t score now what is this one more score is mentioned here which is called as z score z score means 
comparing the patient's BMD value to that of the same age reference population of that area. So T score was comparing with the young adult. Z score compares with the adult of the same age as that of patient. And BMD is the absolute value which we measure and it is given as gram per centimeter square. I am going to tell you a little later that why BMD is also important and not just T score. And what is the role, what is the benefit of having this score, which is Z score? Suppose if you have a young patient, young male, young female who have history of fragility fracture. So in that scenario, you will not use a T score, rather you will use a Z score. So that we have the value compared to a patient of their age group only. So we have already discussed what is the definition of osteoporosis and that only fulfills the criteria of when to treat a person who has osteoporosis. We have discussed this fragility fracture. We have also seen that if T-score is less than minus 2.5. Now the third important definition for osteoporosis was fracture risk assessment tool use and predicting a risk of having a fracture at 10 years. So this can be a major osteoporotic fracture, a risk of 20% or more, or a hip fracture of 3% or more. So this criteria is basically used and used in United States. But this is also been incorporated into the various guidelines for the treatment of osteoporosis. So I'll tell you how to use this FRAX tool.